Hello, it's me, Mr. Johnson, and if you are watching this, you've probably been introduced to Build Your Own Blocks by me already. This is the web editor, and if you haven't gone here already, I'd like you to go into Google, Google Chrome, and type in snap.berkeley, or Barkley as it's uh, called, I think, .edu, and you'll be greeted with this page when it loads up. And once you're on this page, what I'd like you to do is click on Run Snap Now. So if I click on that, it will take me to this. Now, Snap is the new name for Build Your Own Blocks, so don't panic. That's just its new name, but it's still Build Your Own Blocks. This is a slightly updated version. There are um, a couple of differences. But on the whole, it's pretty much the same. You will notice that our sprite is an arrow rather than some kind of green gremlin that it was in Build Your Own Blocks. And uh, on every tab here at the bottom is a make a block button, okay? Rather than just having it in one place, it's everywhere now, which is really nice. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give this a name if I can. Oh, it's all gone wrong at the first hurdle. How can I give this a name? Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to give this a name. Project notes. Nope, cool. That's, that's a thing. Uh, can I just click on this? No. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, uh, I've lost interest. Uh, we'll leave it as untitled. Um, that's not important. So what we're going to do is we are going to start very simple with the basics. Okay, so I'm going to click down here on make a block. Now, if I do click on that, I'll get this box pop up and it will automatically assume I want to make a motion block because I'm in motion. If I press cancel and go to pen and click make a block, it will automatically assume that I want to make a block in pen. Now, if I didn't, if I wanted to change that, I can just kind of change that by clicking on one of these, but I do want to make a block in pen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this draw a square. And we're gonna make this for all sprites. It's gonna be a command, so we'll leave those and we're gonna press okay. Hopefully you're following along with this. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the pen down, I'd like to draw a square, and I'd like to pick the pen back up. So when the pen is down, it will be drawing, and when the pen comes up, it will stop drawing. And we're simply gonna use a uh, move and a turn in order to draw our square. So if I pop them together, let's say move uh, 50 steps, and we're gonna to have to turn 90 degrees to make a square. Now if I press OK on that and go to control, get a when green flag clicked, get a, what do I want? I wanna grab that block I just made, so when green flag clicked, I'd like you to draw a square. And if I press play, okay, it's drawn me a line and it's turned. Can you see the arrow is now pointing downwards? If I play it again, it's come down and now it's pointing to the left. And if I press it again, it's gone across and it's now pointing up. So we can get a real good sense of the direction that our arrow is pointing in because every time I run draw a square, if I right click on this block, I can go right down to edit. Every time I draw a square, I tell it to move 50 steps and I turn it to tear, and then I tell it to turn 90 degrees. And so this is a bit long. Um, so let's make this happen four times and we could just copy this code and run it four times or we could be more specific and I could pop this up here. Uh, that didn't work, but I can drag pen up off. I can drag move and I can pop that inside repeat. And I now don't wanna repeat it 10 times because the square doesn't have 10 sides. I'm gonna repeat it four times. So I can draw four sides of my square. So I'm gonna put my pen down and I'm gonna do this four times. So I'm gonna move 50 steps, I'm gonna turn 90 degrees. I'm then gonna pick my pen up Okay, so press OK on that. I'm also gonna, every time I click the green flag, I'm just gonna clear the screen so that there's no drawing from last time that I did. Because if I uh, if I don't use the clear, I can kind of wind up with it getting a bit messy. So I'm gonna press the green flag here and we can see that it draws me a square. Lovely. And every time I press it, it clears it and draws me a brand new square. So, that's pretty cool. Now the square at the moment only draws at one size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this and I'm going to click on this little plus here and I am going to add in a new input. And we're gonna, instead of uh, it 
having 50 steps here being moved by, we're going to tell it just how many steps to move by. So I'm going to give it a, uh, a name of size. So our square is going to have a size that we can give it. And uh, our input is going to be, if I click on this little arrow, I get this big menu pop out. If I click on that little arrow, oh, and I'm going to tick number because our size is going to be a number. Okay, if it was going to be uh, anything that I wanted or some text or uh, maybe a boolean, then I could tick that corresponding one, but we want number. And I can also set it a default value. So what should it be if no one, if, as it, when I kind of pull it out of the box? Let's make it 10. Why not? And I'm going to press OK. OK, so I'm going to draw a square. Its size is going to be equal 10. Can you see this here? I can drag this and I can make this bigger if I want to. It's pretty handy. So the size is equal to 10. Uh, unless we give it a number and I can click and drag size and I can put it where it says 50 It's really important that I remember to do this because if I don't then I'll just draw one that's 50 long 50 wide every time Okay, um, but this by doing this I can customize how big my square is So I'm going to press ok and you'll notice here on draw a square when I press ok It will suddenly get a little box where I can put a number so press ok now we have a little box and you'll notice that the 10 that the default value we put in is in there so i'm going to draw a square and let's just test it's working by putting in uh 20 maybe press play and you can see we get a smaller square now what i'd like to do is i would like to draw a sequence of squares so let's use draw a square and let's put three of them down and I'm going to go 10, 30, and 50. You could choose any that you liked. Uh, I think I might do 10, 20, and 30, actually. 10, 20, and 30. There we go. And that's drawn me three squares, one after the other, slowly getting bigger and bigger. And you can see the way it's drawn it, they're kind of coming out of the same corner. Um, makes a nice little pattern. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this its own block. So I'm going to draw a square. 10, 20, and 30, and I'm going to just make this into its own block so it's simpler. So I'm going to call this a fancy square. Okay, so imagine it's just one square with a little bit of detail inside it. So I'm going to click make a block in the pen still, and I'm going to call it draw a fancy square. If I can spell, lovely. And I'm going to press OK. Now it's not going to take any input, or is it? Yeah, it is going to take an input, but we'll deal with that in a bit. I'm first just going to drag over, draw a square, and pop it in. Okay, so drag all of those three blocks, draw a square 10, draw a square 20, draw a square 30, and press OK. So now, when I want to draw a fancy square, I can pop this over, leave it there, and press play, and it draws a fancy square. Now what I can do is I can maybe go over to control, I can repeat this a certain amount of times, And let's say, I don't know, six. And every time I draw a fancy square, I'm going to move along a little bit. So let's see what happens if I move 10 steps. Press go. Okay, interesting. It's kind of overlapping itself. So let's try 20. Okay, starting to get some kind of funky patterns here. It looks almost like a, a skyscraper or something, like a cartoon skyscraper. What happens if we do 30? Hmm. Okay, my arrow's gone off the screen there. So what it might be a good idea to do is think about what we're doing right at the start of when the green flag's clicked. So um, I'm clearing the, the screen every time so that it's brand new, but actually, really, I should probably start with this in the same position every time. So I'm going to grab a go-to from motion. If I pop that on, and I'm also going to tell it what direction to point in. And my go to X, I'm going to set to minus 240, which will be all the way over this side of the canvas. And my Y, I'm going to set to 180, which will be all the way at the top here. So if I push it all the way to the left and all the way up, I will be in this corner um, when I start. And I'm going to point in the direction of right every time. So now when I press the green flag, you can see that it's started in this corner. Now all of this code here actually could be made simpler. Let's go to control 
and let's add a block to control. Let's make a block up here. And the great thing about Snap or build your own blocks, depending on what you want to call it, is that you can just build your own block for everything. And you can start really customizing um, what all these kind of different actions. And it, it can get quite, uh, you can make it as complex as you like, which is really cool. So I'm going to call this setup um, and I'm going to press OK. And when I get set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear, I'm going to go back to the corner, I'm going to point in the direction of 90. Okay, and I'm just simply going to press OK. And now when the green flag clicks, I'm just going to say set up. And all of that code is now just inside set up and I don't have to worry about what it's doing. Now if I press play here, I get my six fancy squares drawn. Now it would be quite nice to be able to make the squares, the fancy square as big as I like. So I'm going to right click on draw fancy square and I'm going to edit it. And instead of drawing a square at these sizes, I'm going to let myself choose it when I draw a fancy square. So I'm going to click on the little plus here. I'm going to create an input called size, just like we did for the square. I'm going to click on this arrow and tell it that it's going to be a number. And that number is going to be 10 by default, unless I change it. Okay. Now, if it's 10 here, if size is 10, then I want draw a square this one to be 10. If this is 10, this second command, draw a square, I want to be 20. And if this is 10, I want this third command to be 30. So I need to do something to this number so that it's 10 here, it's 20 here, and it's 30 here. Now what can I do to 10? in order to make it 10, in order to make it 20, in order to make it 30. Well, I can multiply. Hopefully you were shouting that at me as you were listening to me talking about it out loud. So I'm going to put in my multiplies from the operators tab and I'm going to say that I want you to draw a square at whatever the size is times 1. So 10 times 1 would be 10. I want you to draw the size, I want you to draw a square at whatever the size is times 2. So 10 times 2 would be 20. And I want you to draw a square at whatever the size is times 3. So if it was 10, it would be 30. And let's press OK on that. So we're going to draw a fancy square. And I'm now, I did have it at 10, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to up it to maybe uh, 30. And let's see how that does. So if I press the green flag. Now you can see I've got bigger squares. Now we're getting it overlapping again because I'm not moving enough steps anymore. So I'm going to make this uh, 90 and that should jump across and you can see there that I've got one, two, three, four, five, almost got six on my screen. I might make this a little bit smaller. I might make this 20 and I'll move 80 steps instead. Okay. Moving 80 steps actually puts a gap between them. So let's move 60 steps. Cool. And I'm going to repeat this eight times instead of six. And we can see that we go from one edge all the way to the other. So now what I've done is I've written some code here, repeat eight, draw a fancy square, move 60 steps, that draws me a line of fancy squares. And I'm going to make that into a block. I'm pretty sure you saw that coming. So make a block and I'm going to say draw a, a line of fancy squares. And press OK. You you could make it a better name for this. I It's very descriptive what I've called this, so I'm not too bothered. But if you think you could kind of make this less writing, then by all means go for it. But draw a line of fancy squares is fine for me. So I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to grab this repeat block and I'm going to pop it in here. So I'm repeating eight, drawing a fancy square, moving 60 steps, draw a fancy square, move 60 steps, draw a fancy square, move 60 steps. And I'm gonna press okay on that. So up here, set up, draw a line of fancy squares. All of that code we've written, and I've just got to put two blocks down now, one to set everything up and one to draw a line of fancy squares. And that's it. This is the magic of uh, build your own blocks uh, because your code can actually become very simple to work with because you've made it, you've, you've kind of hidden away all the nuts and bolts of how it all goes together.
So now what I can do is think about how I could fill the rest of this background. So let's go to control, let's go to repeat. And once I've set up, what I want to do is I want to repeat this so it goes all the way down the screen. And so I'm gonna draw a line of fancy squares and then I'm going to change my Y position. So I'm gonna add, what did I add to get over to here? I think I added 80. Let's try 80, change Y by 80. So it'll draw a line and then it should drop down and draw another line. Hmm, seems to have gone off the screen. So let's have a think about this. So I've gone all the way along, draw my line here, and then I've gone down, but I've not come back across. And so actually it's gone off the screen. So as well as changing Y by 80, what I need to do is I need to set my X back to minus 240. And what that will do is it will drop down and come back to the left-hand side so it can draw another line. Because remember, we're always moving left to right as we're drawing this. So if I press the green flag now, we should get a nice line drawn. And then, oh, I always do this. I've done change Y by 80. I need to change it by minus 80. Silly me. Third time, lucky. Okay. So we have it drawing lines for us now. That's pretty cool. Now this pattern in itself is pretty nice with the, the kind of uh, stripes between them, but I want to make this tiled so that there's no gaps between them. And so I think I need to make this minus 60 because uh, 60 is the size of the square, I think. So if I press play on this, I should see it draw me. There we go. So they match up really nicely now. So I've got how many? One, two, three, four, five, six lines of squares. So I don't need to repeat this 10 times. It's still, you can see it's still going there, but I'm going to change this to six. And if I, oh, if I press play now, it's going to draw me six rows of fancy squares. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take this whole block of code and you guessed it, I'm going to make a block and I'm going to say draw background. Okay. And I'm going to put my whole thing of that in here press OK and I can now just say draw background and when I press green flag it will just start drawing my background and I have just used two blocks to do that which is quite impressive obviously I, I made all these blocks and have kind of built it up but the actual code that's in here when green flag clicked set up draw background and I've hidden all the other kind of clever bits inside these blocks which means that I'm able to do kind of more crazy things. Now, this is a way to think about making blocks. And you can do this in a variety of ways. You can apply this idea and you can kind of really make some pretty cool and creative stuff. So let's have a look at one more idea. Um, if you're inspired enough and want to want to take this in your own direction, by all means, please do. But um, I'm going to maybe draw something over the top of this now and see if we can uh, make something more interesting happen. So we've got draw a square and let's have a little look at that code. So we draw a square, put the pen down, we repeat it four times, we move a certain amount of steps, turn a certain amount of degrees and put the pen up. OK, so let's make a block in the pen and I'm going to say draw triangle. Uh, I did call it draw a square, so maybe I'll call it draw a triangle. Press OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this code. So I right clicked on that there, press duplicate, and then it's going to pop it in here. I'm going to close this draw a square block down, just press OK, and I'm going to open up my draw a triangle. So I'm going to repeat this three times so that I can um, just have three sides for my triangle, and because I just want to test this triangle, I can just detach this draw backgrounds and I'm going to drag in my draw a triangle. Now what's really nice is I didn't have to drag loads of code out here, I just had this one little block I have to drag out and now if I press this button, nothing has really happened. Draw a triangle, pen down, repeat three move size steps. Ah, it doesn't know what size is. Let's uh, add an input for size. So we're going to call this size it's going to be a number and its default value can be 10. It's pretty boring. You can make your own default value. 
Okay, so if I apply that and press play, okay, it did something, but it's a little bit off the screen. So what I want to do is edit my setup code. So right clicked on setup and gone to edit. And instead of going to minus 240, 180, I'm going to change this. Now, instead of just editing this block every time, actually what I could do is, uh, let's just move this down here. What I could do, uh, what am I doing? Let's just drag this so it's over that, that's it. Um, what I could do instead is I could give my, I could let, let myself type in where I want my thing to go when I set up, which I think will be easier. So if I add to my setup, instead of adding an input this time, I'm gonna add some title text. So I'm gonna say X position, and I'm gonna put a colon, okay? And I'm just gonna press okay. And you can see here that setup X position. And I'm going to add to that an input for x. It's going to be a number. And by default, I will set it at 0. OK. So my x position is here. And I'm going to add some more title text. And it's going to be for my y position. Press OK. Uh, oh, I forgot to put a colon there. I'm going to write. Oh, no. I don't want to right click on that. If I just click single left click on it, Y position, I'm going to put a colon there, press OK. Now I'm going to put the little, uh, click on the little plus again. I'm going to call this Y and I'm going to set this input to a number and I'm going to set its default value to zero as well, press OK. And now when someone uses setup, they're going to tell me what the X is and I'm going to drag and pop in the Y as well. And so it will default to zero, zero, but if I wanted to change the coordinates, I could if I wanted to. And now this will allow me, if you watch setup here, if I hit apply, now it's got an X position and a Y position. And so I can tell it exactly what I want it to be. And we're just gonna put it at zero, zero for the time being in order to uh, make sure our draw a triangle is working. So I'm gonna press okay to that and go back to my block editor for my triangle. Now, let's see if we're working. Okay, I think it might be drawing just a very small, oh yeah, I've not put anything in draw a triangle. So it's moving zero steps and it's just turning around. So let's put in, uh, let's make it nice and big, let's make it 50. Press green flag, okay, cool. So because we're turning 90 degrees, we're actually drawing a square. Now what I want to do is make this more like a triangle. So the, these kind of need to start pointing towards each other. I'm gonna go up and make it 100, see what that does. Oh, I didn't hit apply, I need to hit apply. See what that does. Okay, that's made them more angled. Let's try 110, apply, go. Made them more angled, let's try 120, apply, go. Okay, and we've drawn ourselves a triangle. And if I move this out of the way, you can see I've got a nice, perfect triangle there. So this will draw a triangle, and let's try changing the size to 100 and see if it draws me a triangle that's 100. There we go, look at that. So we've now modified our rectangle code to draw ourselves a triangle, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna press OK on that. And I now have a block that will draw me a triangle. Now, as well as that, let's make another block and let's call it draw a circle. Okay, draw a circle. Now, uh, just like the others, we're gonna put the pen down. We're gonna bring the pen back up at the end. We're going to repeat, repeat. And we are going to move a certain amount of steps and turn a certain amount of degrees. And then we're gonna put the pen up. Okay, so if I move 10 steps, turn 15 degrees, actually, let's just see what it does. Let's just, we've, I've not really changed anything. I've just dragged these blocks in here. Let's go back to pen. Let's grab, draw a circle. And I'm gonna, just gonna pop, draw a triangle down here. Draw a circle and let's uh, apply this and let's hit play. Okay, that looks fairly circular. It just hasn't done enough. So let's repeat this. 20 times instead. Apply, 
and play. Cool. Almost there. What about 25? Apply, play. Is that joined up? That looks like it's joined up. Fantastic. So that's actually drawn me a circle. Now, what happens if I make the circle bigger? If I move more steps every time, if I move 20 steps and play. Okay. What happens if I move 30 steps? So we can see the triangle, uh, not the triangle, the circle does get bigger, but it gets a bit less, uh, what's the word? A bit less, what is the word? A bit less defined, I guess, a, a bit less round. So the more steps we move, maybe the the less degrees we want to move hmm I, I i think we can put up with a blocky circle for now so we'll add an input just like we did on others so input will be a uh, size we will make it a number and by default we'll set it to 10 why not we've done everything else at 10 and i'm going to make sure that i drag size down and put it in where move 30 steps is Okay, so I can now tell myself to draw a circle at any size. I'm going to press OK. Now let's have some fun. We've got draw a square, draw a triangle, and draw a circle. So we can draw three shapes. Let's put them all together. And let's just hit play and see what happens. Okay, cool. So that you'll notice that a circle at size 10 is significantly bigger than a square in a triangle. What happens if I draw a circle at like one? Okay, so that draws a much smaller circle, maybe two. Okay, that's not very interesting. So let's start making it interesting. So let's draw a circle at 10, a square at 30, and a triangle at 50. Okay, cool. Um, Maybe let's make the square and the triangle a little bit bigger. So let's do 50 and 70. Okay, that's nice. That's uh, that's worked out really nicely, actually. So you can see that the, the triangle is kind of coming down from one side and going all the way to the other of the circle. I didn't plan for that, but that's, that's happened, and that's quite nice. Uh, the square is coming out of the triangle here, but I can live with that. But if I wanted to, I could maybe make it a little bit smaller. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll do 40 on the square. Uh... 45 yeah look at that okay so the squares nicely inside the triangle triangles nicely inside the circle and now what we can do is we can uh, what can we do let's add some repeats repeats are great for this they really are they uh, can produce some really interesting stuff so let's drag this whole block in here and I'm going to repeat this a certain amount of times. And every time I repeat it, I'm going to move my where I am. And I'm going to turn a small amount of degrees. So let's play that. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> cool. Okay. So that's done that if uh looks like it maybe wants to go to 12 let's do it 12 times nice okay cool so we've got this really cool star now uh wow i, I didn't expect it to look that good actually <laughs> i'm impressed with myself so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this in the pen i'm going to make a block and i'm going to call it draw star draw a star and I'm going to press OK and I'm going to drag all of this and I'm going to pop it into here. Now I could think about how I could make this change size but I think I'd have to change the amount of steps I'm moving as well and so I think that could get a little bit tricky. So let's just leave it as it is and press OK. And now I have a little block that will draw a star. So if I 
just pop draw a star in here and press play it will draw my star for me and you can see that it's made out of a triangle a square and a circle and i get this kind of cool donut shape in the middle get these uh, triangles round and i really like the lines that the squares are bringing as well that kind of add to this effect so once i draw a star what can i do with that star well i could use another repeat and i could pop draw a star in the middle i could then maybe move that uh how what should we do 30 Ooh, that's uh, let's do 50 and i could maybe turn a small amount of degrees and now if i hit play on that so i'm going to draw my first star and then i should move across and turn a little bit and draw another star there we go now that doesn't look very good that's kind of overlapping itself quite a lot so um, what shall I do? Let's do move a hundred steps. It does take quite a long time to draw, doesn't it? Probably not the best uh, best programming here. Oh, even a hundred is a pushing it a little bit. Let's try a hundred and fifty. Okay, so you can see it draw in there, and then I draw one next to it. Now, really what I want to be doing is starting with my Y position at 180, and my X position at, well, no, let's do uh, maybe minus 200 and 100, just to make it start in the top corner a bit more. Uh, maybe that X is a little bit too much, maybe minus 150, and maybe that Y is a little less, so maybe let's do 130 see where we start there yeah that's more reasonable okay i don't know why i'm getting this line at the start but i can live with that so we've got ourselves drawing a start now also we can we i haven't really considered pen color in this so maybe what i'll do is every time i draw a new star i will change my pen color how can i change my pen color where is it set pen color to change pen hue let's do that so every time I draw a star, the hue of a colour is essentially the, the colour of a colour. I don't like that I'm only 10 and 15 degrees here. So I'm going to do uh, 48. Let's see what that does. And I'm going to change the hue by 20, actually. Uh, how's that really changed the hue? That's a good question. You can see that's properly kind of rotating around though now and, and spreading these out a bit quite nicely. And so you can now start thinking about how you could distribute your pattern across the screen. I could also maybe consider drawing them over my background. Maybe I will change my pens Oh, maybe I'll set my pens uh, transparency to 90. What will that do? <coughs> oh dear, excuse me. Okay, so you can see that this was expecting me to start at minus uh, 240, minus 180. Do that every time 180 not minus 180 so i'm drawing a nice transparent background here you can see that it's it's fairly transparent and then what i can do is once i've drawn my backgrounds i can set my pens transparency back to zero so it's not transparent at all and this way i've got a kind of cool background to start drawing my star on so now if I hit play, actually, also, once I've set my pen transparency back to zero, I probably want to go to, let's just go to the middle. Let's press play. So I've used that square, fancy square, to draw my background right at the start. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, I've also used an effect to kind of uh, dull it down a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my star over the top of it. How cool is that? 
And what I'd really like to do is get this hue working. It doesn't seem to be changing by much, but maybe I need to really boot it up a gear. So change pen hue by 100. Maybe that will uh, maybe that will do the trick. Oh, we'll be frozen. Sorry, I think that might have been me. Um, so draw in the backgrounds. Do 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 do. And now we're drawing our star. Yeah, it doesn't look like the hue's working for some reason, but how oh well. Right, now what I'm going to do is instead of turning, I'm just going to go to x uh, minus 100, y 0, and I'm going to move 200 steps. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw, draw this twice. Don't know why this isn't working, but because it's not, I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to press play. Now this will draw my background. Oh, that line is really driving me mad. Okay, there we go. I'm going to um, draw this background nice and faintly. You don't have to do this. You might decide that uh, you want it bolder and more colorful. And then over the top of this, you can see that I'm drawing my star number one. And I'm going to repeat this a second time after I've moved 200 steps. So draw star number two. Now, what I'm going to do <laughs> as one last block is I'm going to say draw pattern one. And draw pattern one is going to do all of this, this whole thing. It's going to do the setup, it's going to do the transparency, it's going to draw the background. It's going to set the pen color and you'll notice that this block that I'm making actually makes use of two blocks that I've already created. So build your own blocks is really living up to its name where I'm building my own blocks and I'm even making blocks out of blocks that I've already made. Even set up as well. Three blocks that I've already made are there. OK, so I'm going to press OK. And now instead of all of that crazy stuff that I've done so far, all I have to do is when the green flag is clicked, I draw pattern one and it will do everything for me. Now, what I'd like you to do is take this idea, uh, put your own spin on it, and I would like you to come up with your own complex pattern using multiple shapes. I've shown you how to draw triangles, circles and squares. There's nothing to stop you drawing, I don't know, pentagons, hexagons, whatever takes your fancy. I've even managed to combine things like these uh, triangles in order to make star shapes. And so you can think about how you can combine basic shapes to make more complicated shapes. You can use rotation like I've done, movement. You can experiment with your pen color, with your pen's hue, transparency, brightness, saturation, and really have some fun with this in order to make your own patterns that are, that are interesting. They don't have to be works of art. But um, they it tends. I've just kind of made this up as I've gone along, and it's uh, it's turned out pretty well for me. So anything you do, you can kind of tweak and think about it, and uh, you should end up with something fairly good. Now I will say just before I end this that it's important that once you've got something, that you come up here to this little piece of paper, and you click on it, and you press save as, and I'm going to click on computer give it a name. Uh, what should I call it? My snap pattern one and press save. And you'll see that it's downloaded here. Now, if I, now that I've downloaded it, if I refresh my page, refresh, reload, changes that you made may not be saved. If I hadn't saved this, I'd be pressing cancel, but because I saved it, I can press reload. Uh-oh, I've deleted everything. I'm back to square one. Luckily, I can press this. I can go to import and I can find that from my downloads. Now, your downloads will look slightly different to mine because I'm on a different type of computer. But I can find my snap pattern one. It's a .xml file in case uh, 
needs needs that extra information as well but you should be able to identify it by its name press open and I'm back in business and you can see my pattern is back fantastic so that is snap that's build your own blocks I'd like you now to start experimenting with your own patterns your own shapes and see if you can impress me and don't forget once you've got something saved what once you've got something good make sure you save it even if it's even if you're doing this kind of two or three times as you're developing this so that if you do lose anything if something does go wrong you've got something saved so that you don't lose everything okay sweet